Hi, I'm Carolyn Gage. I want to share some thoughts about the upcoming reading of Georgia and the Butch on March 7th. It's free and online and sponsored by the Southwest Harbor Public Library. To register, see the link in the YouTube text or the Facebook comments below. Anyway, this is a reading of nine years of letters between Georgia O'Keeffe and Maria Chabot. Georgia was an internationally famous, married, closeted older woman in her mid-50s. Maria was a young, single, highly skilled, highly educated butch in her late 20s. The letters bear witness to a long relationship with a significant power imbalance. Maria, deeply infatuated with Georgia, worked for her as a handyman and property manager. She called herself the handyman. And then later designed and built the world famous house at Abiquiu, New Mexico for Georgia. Maria did not receive a wage or a salary, just sporadic checks whenever Georgia felt like sending one. Maria said repeatedly in the letters that she did it all for love. So the correspondence appears to be the sad record of O'Keeffe's decade long financial and emotional exploitation of Chabot. So why devote an evening to the reading of these letters? Haven't we all had enough of tragic lesbian narratives? Well, I had that question too when I read the book of the letters, but this is my response. It's history, it really happened. These women actually wrote these letters to each other and they provide an important corrective to the biographies of O'Keeffe. They also write Maria Chabot back into the narrative in her own words, proving beyond a doubt she was more than a friend, more than an assistant, and that she was the designer and contractor of O'Keeffe's very famous house. But there's something else I remember. Um, decades ago, I read an article by a drummer, and I'm sorry to say, I don't remember the name of the publication or the author. If you recognize this story, please let me know. But the drummer was a street musician. She was a busker. She would go out on the sidewalk and drum. And she said that when people would come and stand in front of her to listen, she would try to get a feel for them, for their state of mind, their vibration, their inner rhythm. And then she would try to express what she was picking up and drum it back to them. And she wrote that when she did this, a change would come over them and the person would transform. There was something about experiencing their inner state externalized by someone else that would change them and heal them. So Georgia and the Butch is a story that many of us lesbians have lived. It's a story of unreciprocated love, codependence, gaslighting, misplaced loyalties. So many of us have been so marginalized and so stigmatized for who we are or how we look that we have learned to be grateful for any relationship, even a toxic one, that offers even a crumb of acceptance or validation. Working on this play, I felt like I was walking backwards through my own lesbian life, my own childhood even, and also revisiting memories of other relationships I had observed in various lesbian communities. I felt the play was drumming back to me shameful personal as well as community secrets that were deeply buried in my own psyche and in our collective psyche. The play disturbed me profoundly. I talked about the letters incessantly for weeks. And then I heard it read and beautifully, expertly read, I might add, and something shifted. I began noticing and confronting disrespect more frequently, cutting ties with outgrown friendships where there was a lack of accountability. And I started to feel lighter younger and less burdened, healed. And that is my best argument for why lesbians should come and see Georgia and the Butch 